Today I have the pleasure of speaking with Chris Reed from Neo Metals. How are you today, Chris? I'm very well, Tracy. How are you? I'm fantastic. And here we go again. You just hit, keep hitting one benchmark after another, one milestone after another. And on top of that, uh, for the last several years, you have been, um, uh, I've got here uh, three consecutive dividends in the last financial years. Do I have that information correct? Please correct me. No, that, that is correct, Tracy. We've re returned about $28 -odd million to our shareholders in three consecutive dividends. Can you tell me why, you know, being in this space, I, I, I never hear about any other company doing this in this particular uh, market valuation. Can you tell me, you know, what makes you different? Why are you doing this for your shareholders or how can you do this? Um, look, I mean, you know, our, our sort of motto is, you know, we're a business, you know, I, I measure the success of a business by giving back more than you take off people. Um, you know, we uh, managed to sell some equity in the, the Mount Marion mine a number of years ago, uh, which gave us a very, very healthy cash balance, far in excess of what we needed to, to spend. Uh, and, you know, prudent returns back to the shareholders, uh, you know, is one of the things that we sort of pride ourselves. You know, you've got to remember that, uh, that uh, the board of management is the largest shareholder in the company. So, you know, we are very well aligned uh, to sharing the gains that we do make. Well, I know we love this here at Investor Intel. Can you tell us when you plan on listing in North America or plan on doing a dual listing? Uh, you know, look, our most immediate uh, corporate move is to uh, recommend to the shareholders to demerge our titanium vanadium assets away from, uh, from the lithium business. Um, you know, Mount Marion is, is very mature. It's generating cash. We're now looking to build a... Uh, a downstreaming lithium hydroxide plant, a lithium battery recycling plant. Um, they've got their own capital needs. Barambi is a far, far bigger um, resource by value, but not as developed. Um, so we think, you know, we're not getting value for that in the current portfolio. We'll separate that out first. Um, you know, we have, uh, we have a, an American depository receipt program uh, on the pink sheets and the NASDAQ international designation. Um, but, you know, for us, we think that the shareholders prefer, you know, they'll own the same amount in each, in each project, but in two companies. Well, I, this was, of course, put out in a news release just a month ago, and I believe I read that you would have completed this demerger uh, in March, spring of next year. Is that correct? Yeah, certainly. Look, we've got to, uh, we've got to put our financial results out by uh, the end of September. We'll have a bit more information around the demerger. We have to have all our documents to the shareholders at least four weeks before the annual general meeting, which is at the end of November. Uh, and we hope to complete that early, uh, pending approval in, uh, in the March quarter, early in the March quarter of 2019. Well, you always put out such comprehensive news releases, and you had one more recently about uh, uh, being able to produce uh, commercial-grade zeolite. Can you tell us a little bit about this news release and what it means for the shareholders, please? Yeah, sure. Um, you know, the spodumene concentrate that we produce at Mount Marion, we have to, we have to leach the lithium out. Uh, how the lithium got there in the first place is it got attracted or, you know, in a molecular sieve. Uh, which was the al aluminium and, and uh, silica. So basically what we're doing is uh, re reactivating that uh, and giving it another life. So, you know, turning waste into an engineered product, uh, any net benefit out of that will just reduce our operating costs for the lithium business. And I also read, I thought this was interesting anyways, I hope, my sh I hope the, uh, the investor intel audience does, but you recently took out a two-year option to sublease a 40 hectare, hectare site for your proposed lithium hydroxide processing facility. Can you give us an update on this? Yeah, correct. We, uh, we took a, an option from the, uh, from the local government. Um, the plant like, is located about five kilometers outside of Kagoolie, which is my hometown about uh, 40 kilometers as the crow flies from the mine. Uh, so basically, you know, we've got, we've got national highways, national rail connected to multiple points. Uh, we've got high voltage power, natural gas to site. I mean, it's, uh, it's a real no-brainer for us.
And Chris, you know, you've been, we've been watching you for a couple of years now. And uh, again, you seem to keep achieving one milestone after another. So what I'm interested in is what are you working on presently with Neo Metals that is uh, most engaging for you? What are you most excited about these days? Uh, I've got to say I'm pretty excited about the lithium battery recycling project. So, you know, we had a couple of delays. We've brought in a big uh, Australian engineering firm to finish off the construction. Uh, the plant's up in Montreal, um, so we'll be running that November, December this year before working into the um, engineering and design phase. So, you know, these these batteries that you've got in your phone or your laptop, you know, they're 20% by weight cobalt, which is an incredible value. Uh, so we've had to apply ourselves for the last couple of years to come up with a safe process to to get that those materials out. And that really closes the loop. So for every ton of lithium we get back uh, out of a car battery uh, in a couple of years, we're going to be getting uh, a ton of nickel metal and 130 kilos of cobalt for free. Well, forgive me. I didn't warn you about this question, but I'm going to throw it out there anyways. With the U.S. Yeah. Defense Act, and of course you're in the U.S. right now, you do have a number of critical materials. I would include titanium in that list and vanadium. Can you tell sure. us... Can you make any comments on this particular act and whether or not uh, we as shareholders will be impacted positively with sources such as your own with uh, these crit critical materials, or do you have any comments you'd like to share with our audience? Uh, yeah, look, the Defence Act, I'm not all that worried about. You know, I, I'm really, if, I'm probably more concerned with the pending US Sino trade war. Um, you know, they, you start putting on you know, allegedly 25% tariffs on Chinese titanium pigments and stuff like that, you know, you'd, there, there is the potential for, for, you know, upsetting the apple cart in terms of pricing. You know, Australia always uh, remain a, a, a free trade nation, so, you know, we'll, we'll be happy to supply to the US as we're happy to supply uh, to China. But, you know, I think if you have a look at the modelling of what the effects of a trade war, you know, it's the US GDP down by four and a half and China down three and a half. And for the rest of the world, that just doesn't add up to fun. No, not only does it not add up to fun, but considering the basket of critical materials you have, can you tell me which one, say the apple cart does get uh, shaken up a little bit more, will be most affected? Affected. Yeah, I think titanium, uh, the titanium pigment prices, not so much the feedstocks, but the pigments that the Chinese export uh, into the US will become, you know, less competitive, probably open up room for the uh, for the European guys to supply into North America. Lithium, China is pretty much self-sufficient in lithium. It imports a little bit, but, you know, exports a little bit. So I don't think the lithium is going to worry them. I think, you know, fundamentally... Um, the lithium price is, shouldn't be knocked around too much by it. Um, vanadium, well, China's got to, you know, from the start of November is going to have to add significantly more vanadium to its rebar steels to, to meet the, the new requirements. So I think the vanadium market's still going to be pretty tight. You know, that's a, that's a running out of good feedstocks. Well, Chris, as always, it's a pleasure to speak with you. Have a wonderful day. Yeah, you too, Tracy. We'll see you soon.